In real life, trains have got to pull in for regular maintenance and drivers have got to go home. But why not in Transport Fever 2? Today, we're going to fix this and it's super simple. So let's get into it. So the most important thing when you're designing a depot is your location. You aren't going to want to have a depot all the way over here. And there's a very good reason for this. You want to have a depot near a train station. A, because if a train is accelerating out of a station or decelerating, it's not going to be at a huge speed. So it's not a huge loss if we're slowing down to go past this depot or to enter the depot. And it's not going to slow other trains down. B, any terminating routes at the station can also bypass the station very slightly and it hasn't got far to go to get to the depot. For example, this route here terminates in capital at this platform, but it can actually bypass this whole station and go through here and end up at the depot, which we're going to show off in a little bit. You're also going to want to have the depot as central as possible in your map. For example, this is a very long map. So this is far left and this is far right. And you'll notice the depot sits round about the center just there. So now I've cleared everything out. All you're going to need is a main line with all your three types of trains going on your commuter, intercity and cross country, and a nice bit of flat land beside the track. Simple as that. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is to go to tracks. We're going to build off the main line. I've got a special mod installed that helps you build train yards, which is called the track speeds mod, link in description. And this allows you to make tracks set to a maximum speed of all the way down to 20, which is really useful. So I'm going to grab this track. You can also do a standard track in the game though. And we're going to build across here just like that. And we're going to build out a little bit just until we get to about four tracks across and then stop and then delete the three tracks preceding it. And now you've got a nice perfect parallel track with the main line. So the next thing to do is you want to get a station down. You can actually be really clever here. Honestly, I would recommend using a passenger station for this bit because the stations are actually thinner. You can fit a lot more in there. So I'm going to go and grab this little guy and I'm going to shove him down just there like that. And then I can delete this old track. Now go to configure and we're going to get rid of all the station. All we want is the tracks and one piece of platform with no underpass. Now on tracks again, we're going to get the track we want. We're going to keep expanding this. So we're going to go one, two away from the platform, get rid of the old track now. So it's platform on the end, then add a platform here. Same again, one, two, etc., etc. You can do this as many times as you like until a point that is too far for the game as the game has a maximum limit on size. To get around this, however, there is a way you can build out really far away from the main line and then set the station all the way over here and that gives you some more room to work with. You'll now be able to much further than the other station. I think we'll just go for six for now. That's pretty good. Now I recommend this mod here, which allows you to build pedestrian track crossings so the workers of the maintenance yard can cross the tracks without any needs for bridges. I personally love this mod. I think it's really good, so I'm going to include this. But if you don't want this, you could use a modded bridge or the vanilla underpass. Next thing is to extend these tracks to the length of the longest train on the route. In my case, that's going to be the ICE which runs on my mainline bullet slash cross country service. Now this train takes the whole length of this station. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six lengths of track. So we've got to add this to the depot as well. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six, and do this for all of them. If the game's been a bit laggy while you do this, press pause and it really helps. Okay, now that's filled in. You don't add platforms to all of this. There's no need. What we're going to do instead, very simply, is we're going to connect it all together. So grab one nearly in the middle. Obviously, there's no middle here, but this is pretty much the middle. Bring it out a little bit. Make sure that this is selected so the up-down options are available like this. If not, it's going to go downhill and stuff, which you don't want. And it's going to be all over the shop. So keep it nice and straight, nice and flat. And then we're going to go one from either side into this track. We're going to start off on this side because it's unbalanced. So we're going to plug this in here as soon as we can, which is going to be just there. We're going to extend the track out some more. Then one from this side, plug that in there. Then one from this side, you get the gist. You can do the same on both sides, although it's up to you on the second side if you want to do the same design or your different design. Personally, I'm going to use a different design. I'm going to start off on the bottom just here and then add other tracks like this. Don't forget as well, you can also run your main line through the middle of all this. Have a play around with it. It's really fun to mess with. Once you've got this end, delete the end off there. So it's just the points. And now we've got the basis of the yard. We're going to add a depot so we can spawn trains in nice and easy and have a hub. I've got this beautiful depot asset, but you can use the vanilla depot if you want to. This is looking perfect. I also added a little curve over here on the end of this track as it just slots in a little bit nicely to the main line. Speaking of, let's plug it in. So to do this, it's basically just your standard connection. 
Now the trains in this world are right hand traffic so they drive down that side of the track. So what we're going to do is a very simple junction here. We're going to do the absolute basics. We're going to plug in this track to this side and then we're going to have a switch that goes over to the other side of the track just like that. Now we need to add some signals obviously. So we're going to replace those signals with a signal just there, a signal just there and of course a signal just there. There's not going to be any trains coming out this way but it's worth having just for aesthetics and just in case. Okay, and connect the other side as well. Now this side's a little bit more tricky, but add a signal just like we did on the other side to that track and that track, and that's all good to go. We don't need any crossovers here. But one thing we do need to do is turn around the trains because if you're a terminating train that's coming into the train station and then passing through to the depot being maintained, you wanna get back on your route. You don't wanna go that way. You wanna turn around, you wanna go back up there. So for that reason, we need to have a turnaround track and it's super easy to do, so don't worry. After this junction, grab yourself a track and we're gonna bring it down and we're gonna go underneath the tracks or over the tracks depending on your setup. I'm gonna go underneath. Perfect, just like that. So a train can pull in here, it can then go underneath and loop round and come back the same way it came. Last thing obviously is to plug it in. Now we need to add signals to all of this. We want a signal there, but we do not want a signal there. And I'll tell you why in a sec. Trains coming out of the depot are fine to wait, that's not an issue. This guy is accelerating away from the station, getting faster and faster to try and get to its destination at the quickest time possible. Obviously the more speed, the more passengers are going to pay, the more money you're going to make. So you don't want to be interrupting these guys as they're accelerating. So this junction is perfect, however an exception to the rule is going to be over here. Because these guys are decelerating to get to the train station and it doesn't matter so much. And also there's a track going uphill here and the last thing that you want to do is stop a train going uphill because you might never get it started again. So we're going to get rid of that signal and that signal is going to go there instead. And that might make a slight delay, but you know what, it's not too bad. Now add signals to the exits of the maintenance yard, just like that, looking perfect. And the same thing for your depot, make sure there's a signal there, and then plug the depot into the main line. And this is why we have a crossover instead of two tracks going straight into both main line tracks. It's because we can reuse it. There's two entry points onto the main line here, so just use one crossover. No need. Get rid of the other one. And just an example of this, this guy's accelerating, he's getting up to speed. This guy has to wait at this signal. And once in the clear, it can start going, entering the main line. So let's grab this train here for an example. We'll go to the line manager and we'll see what we need to do. So we've got quite a few stops this train needs to make. So all that needs to do basically is go to the end of the station and we're going to repeat this whole pattern on here as many times as you like. This is how many journeys it's going to make before heading to the maintenance depot for a quick repair or whatever. Now hold on there because it does take a minute to do this and it can be a bit boring but once it's done it's really worth it, trust me. Once you've done the desired amount of journeys, add the station on the way back and then do one more trip on the route. Okay, lovely, that's one route done routes-wise, but there's something very important that we forgot. Transport Viva 2 is currently treating the maintenance depot as a passenger station. Not the best idea in the world, is it really? There's no passengers that want to go here. Very easy fix. Scroll down and find the maintenance depot in the routes tab. It's worth naming the actual platform maintenance depot, it makes things easier to find. Once you've found it, you want to first of all select all of the other platforms as alternate platforms. Second of all, go to the departure configuration tab and set the minimum stop time to 3 minutes or 60 seconds or in between there. Those are the amounts that work best. I'm going to go over full 3 minutes. Now this is really important, go to filters, on maintenance depot, set unload and loads to unticked and then set capital or the station before at the terminus to load level unticked. Now this means as people come down this track, the last stop on the route is capital. And when the train leaves again, it's not going to be full of passengers. It's going to go straight to the depot and then after that to the next station to pick up passengers. So now we should start seeing some of these commuter trains on the maintenance depot. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for all types of trains. So there's three types of trains on the route, as is the best way of doing it in Transport Fever 2 and in real life, of course. We've got the commuter trains, which are the RA2s. We have the Lostoshkas, which are the intercity or express trains. And the Ice 1, which is our bullet train or the cross country. You can really do this with any route. In fact, I recommend every single route you go and send them to the maintenance depot at some point. It just adds that extra bit of realism. In fact, you can even build yards for specific routes. You could have this whole thing filled with ICEs if you wanted to. Now with all of the routes on the way to the maintenance depot, you want to make sure that from the terminus station there's no loading of the train whatsoever. So we're not loading a capital here, we're not going to load up Palm Valley. This is a cross map train, so unfortunately we're going to miss out on passages, but it's worth it because it looks really awesome. Now when the route goes to a terminus, make sure that the stations from between the terminus and the maintenance depot 
are removed from the route on the way back as you're not actually going to be able to pick up any passengers until you get out of the maintenance depot back onto the main line. So for example this is the terminus here. So the train goes all the way down here straight back and doesn't stop at Capital this time, goes straight to the maintenance depot and then back on the main line. It misses it just this once. And don't forget to set the terminus to no loading before we get to the maintenance depot. Now okay we've covered all the trains going this way but what about trains that aren't going this way? What about trains that terminate here and go back the other way? Well it is in catchment range so we can do this. So it's the exact same process basically. We're going to repeat the route several times and then one slight thing at the end. And the same process at the maintenance depot we're going to select all tracks as possible routes. After the maintenance depot we've got to turn around again because we're not going this way we're going back on ourselves. So at a station we're going to go back to capital but this time it's going to be in a slightly different platform obviously it's going to be a through platform instead of the terminus this time of course but let's stick this on the end here just by where the terminus is usually so it's nice and easy for passengers that happens to be number 13. we'll also add 11 and 12 as a stop here and that means up to three trades can be in this platform at the same time as we can stop at three different points along the platform after capital it's back to the original station we just made a custom capital, so I removed the original capital and then it loops back around to Pretoria. If it does anything like this, no path, just press the reverse button. It generally fixes it 99% of the time. Don't know why, just does. But don't go anywhere because that's not it. There's a really cool thing that takes a second that's going to really improve the looks. It's so simple, let's do this right now. Go to tracks and, w and in this area where the train's turning around, we can make a flat track that's nice and straight. In fact, let's go with two next to each other. Then we're going to connect both of these up to this exit track. We're going to add a couple of signals to both of these. And next we're going to delete these original tracks so it's just the little branches coming off. And you want to download this special mod that allows you to place very small stations. In fact, it's just a piece of track. Link in description. We're then going to select the track type we want and we're going to connect two of these. I like to offset these a little bit though so I'm going to add a little bit of track just here and then place the other one just there. Then I'm going to extend the tracks a bit further out but not too far, nothing crazy and we're gonna go to about there. That's looking pretty good. Next up, go back to the space we left next to the maintenance depot, go to configure. We're gonna add a couple of tracks. It doesn't matter what track it is, just as long as there's something there. Bring the track out to there, make it flat, and then go back to configure and get rid of the original. We're gonna extend both these tracks out as far as we can possibly go with them, or as far as you'd like to go, in my case there. Connect those up. So these are gonna go into the main line, and then connect these up. Add a quick signal on there as well. Right at the end of this track, we're going to add a slight crossover, but make sure you leave a gap so we can park a train in this section here. We're going to add a little gap here that crosses over just like that. Now after the points, delete this piece of track, go back to the stations, we'll add another one just there, and complete the track back to what it was. Then on this side of the track, it's a similar situation, get rid of that there, and then get rid of the little turn we just made. Then we're going to take this about halfway to what it was, go to buildings, place another one down, and then now we should be able to place our junction back in, but this time we have our little platform. Just like that, lovely. Then connect this back up. This is looking brilliant already. So we're gonna create a new route from the rightmost track. That's gonna go from there. And that's gonna go, first of all, down to the end here. And then it's gonna back up into that one there. Then back to this end one. And then that's the correct route layout. Now make it wait at number three for any time you want. I'm gonna go for 60 seconds. Nice slow number just because it keeps things moving around, but they are stopping and staying for at least some amount of time. Capital transfer number four is okay. Number two, I would make this about 10 seconds. In fact, we can make both of these 10 seconds. I guess this simulates the crew changing ends of the train or setting it to reverse so it can go the other way. And then over at the starting position, the siding, I would go for about three minutes, but 60 seconds just for the showcase. And that's that done. We can then add a train to this route. We could use a massive ass depot and turn it around and stuff, but let's just cheat. Let's go to buildings and we'll add a tiny little depot here, like a fake depot. And then we can plug that straight in there with no hassle. <laughs> so really you can buy whichever train you want. You could literally use the Fushimahao if you wanted to. <laughs> Nothing is stopping you. Uh, but I would not recommend this one, obviously. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go for instead uh, a lovely little EMD GP9. And you know what? We'll give it a nice blue color as well. Lovely stuff. So he's now going to pull into the sidings, he's going to switch into reverse, and then he's going to go back that way, and he's going to stop in the siding, just there. And that's exactly how it works. Now pause the game when he stops in the siding. And this is why. We're going to go to assets, and make sure you've got this mod, which is insane. It literally adds every train as an asset. There's no more mods after this, by the way. This is the last one. Now here are my personal recommendations. You're going to want, under Asia Wagon Cargo, you're going to want the modern fuel tank. I would plug that one in somewhere. And you're going to want the 1850 flatbed, maybe a couple of these little guys. 
Next up is going to be Asian Wagon Pass. Don't do it in first to last order, mix these up a little bit so it's not all Asian, then all European, then all American. Mix it in with each other. These are the vehicles to use though. Asia Wagon Pass, we've got quite a few to work with here. So we go for this one, this is a nice little crew car. So this is where the crew could work, right? Another good one for this is this one. You're welcome to choose which one you like, obviously. I'm going to go for that one. This one's a great one, this Russian carriage. So is this Chinese one, and so is this Chinese one. They all look very nice. In fact, you can also throw a diesel locomotive amongst that if you wanted to. Totally up to you. Now, what can we use for European stuff? Well, personally, I recommend going to the multiple units and then getting the double-decker carriage. That's very nice. Don't place them where I'm placing them, by the way. I'm just showing off what you can use. That's pretty much it for multiple units, but underneath passengers, we've got a few more to work with. I would recommend these last two here, but honestly, I usually just use the last one and a couple of these guys, and it looks pretty cool. There's nothing much under cargo for European you can use. You could use this one if you want. This is a nice little utility this is a utility that sometimes goods yards have they just have like a little hopper just to carry things around the goods yard but nothing crazy now underneath american i usually go for a good streamlined car this one in the middle looks quite nice and it kind of fits in any sort of setting and under cargo you could also use this tank car as well it's not too big not too crazy fits in it pretty nice so this is the rolling sort you got to work with i'm going to put something together real quick i think that looks fantastic but we can take this one step further we can actually add another line in that's going to give us a little bit more space to work with. So let's add a few more bits to this. Nothing crazy. So that is looking lovely right there. We've got loads of different rolling stock. And if we press play now, any second now, this train's going to disconnect. It's going to go up here. Then the driver's going to switch over to reverse. We're going to go back out of the yard. And we're going to go back to the siding over there where this train can be stored. And we can delete our original old siding. We don't need that anymore. Now this is great and all, but what about moving trains? There's no moving trains in this yard apart from the engine itself. Well, okay. Let's do that. Let's pause the game and delete the ends of the active maintenance depot and then go back to buildings. And then we're gonna grab a brand new station, but don't use these stations. This time we're gonna use the vanilla station. Make it the shortest length possible because we're gonna have to fit this in just temporarily. And we slide that in there just like that. We're then gonna bin all the crap we don't need. All we're looking for really is just the track and platform. Now that's in, we can reconnect everything back up. Now that's all in it, we've got a second slim station, we can go back to our route, add a station and this end station, not the main station, the end one, and then set this alternate platform to any of these guys along here. 60 seconds or thereabouts, can't be too long because if trains are going to be stopping here, you don't want to be blocking them up, this is just a visual thing. It looks like our turnaround route's automatically going back on itself, we don't want that to happen, so, so we're going to create a quick waypoint at the bottom of this hill. And we're going to add that as a quick checkpoint to go by before we go back to capital. So making sure we're going the correct way down the track. Perfect. That is now all ready to go. So stick a quick depot on the end of the leftmost track here. We're going to buy a vehicle. Take your pick anything you want out of here. In this case, I'm going to go for the China Railways DF5. We'll stick that on to, in this case, line two and get rid of that then. Now, what this guy's going to do is he, he's going to wait here in this siding. And when he gets a command, aka when he's waited enough time, he's going to go out any second now. And he's going to leave towards the main area of the maintenance depot. Basically, where the trains are going to stop is going to be here. And they're going to come right up to this point here. And then this train is going to choose a platform. And it's going to park up right in front of the main train. Almost as if the train is coming and stopping in front of it. Giving it some sort of supply as it's maintained. We're starting to get a few trains pulling in now. We've got a couple here already. Quick tip, these icons can get quite annoying, so go up here to the top left, click at the bottom here, and then turn it off that by pressing this button just here. And now you can see everything but the station logo is very useful. Make sure to use the paint tool underneath assets to give this the nicest look possible. I've used a mix of gravel, scree, and ballast. Underneath the tracks, I've used the dirt. But this depot isn't going to make you any money, it's actually going to lose you money. And that's why you need to watch this video which shows you the best possible design for a cargo station. And it works really well alongside this depot, so definitely check this out.